okay so you've got the modeling job but now what that's where i come in i'm jasmine lee and today i'll be sharing my top 10 questions that you should ask your next client whether you be the model or the photographer these questions are designed to basically help you gain clarity on your client's vision so if you're interested in that just keep watching so number one you may want to ask why your client chose you play up your strengths maybe they like a certain way that you wear your hair maybe you have a signature style maybe they like the way you speak the way you carry yourself they may like your engagement which is a lot of what influencer marketing and modeling is about maybe they just like you now that you're clear on why they chose you you can play into that and really butter them up <laughs> next up is the emotion or vibe that they want portrayed now sometimes, as far as modeling is concerned, photographers will have reference images. And so in that image, you want to make sure that the emotion and the vibe that that client is trying to create with you is matching the reference image. And not to say that if they don't match, it's something that you shouldn't do. But if they don't match, this gives you a chance to probe a little further, ask questions, figure out where their mind is at, and see how you can make the connection. Third, what do you want me to stay away from? This question, although it sounds broad, it's really not. In the modeling industry, especially now, because it just kind of feels like everything has been done, everything has been said, Although your delivery could be different, there may be things that a photographer is just done with. Here in Baltimore, one of our cliches in the modeling world is Graffiti Alley. Now, Graffiti Alley attracts everyone because it's just this big, huge alley full of graffiti. It's exactly what it sounds like. Sometimes you can get really amazing pictures here, but it's very hard because it's such a busy location. The artwork is always changing because it's graffiti, so people are tagging it up. It never looks the same way when you go back. So Graffiti Alley is one of those cliches that a lot of models may stay away from, and sometimes even photographers may stay away from it. I feel like it's kind of like a rite of passage. Everyone has been in Graffiti Alley at least once in their life. So that's something along the lines of what I mean when I say ask what do you want me to stay away from that's a you know a cliche thing so are there any cliches that your photographer is just not interested in next this one is a little more advanced and this may be for a paying client only or like a company or product that you're trying to sell what's your demographic and what demographic are you trying to attract that way you know how to show up and show out on set you kind of know and get a better gauge of if their audience is even an audience that you want to tap into, is it even worth it for you? Um, that's something that you want to look at. In terms of being mutually beneficial, sometimes if they want to attract your demographic, which you can figure that out if you have an Instagram creator or business account, you can see what your typical demographic is. Is it primarily men or women? Um, do they fall in the age range of 13 to 25? Or do they fall more into 50 to 80 category you know what i mean i know those are like fly by night um age ranges but that's what you kind of want to figure out to just see if your brands and your um missions are aligned what do you like about the reference images that you provided now there may be props involved there may be posing involved wardrobe clothes lighting whatever Whatever it is about that reference image, you want your clients to tell you what it is they like about those images and what stands out to them. That way you can possibly replicate that. Now, when I first started modeling, my mentor, Mr. Martin, shout out to Colored Pixels, um, he would always send me a very nice reference and I would get as close to that reference as I could each and every time. And we were able to work really well together because he was able to provide me with a clear and concise vision. It's a little harder to gain some traction in modeling or photography when you kind of don't have a vision for what you're trying to do. What is a must have in these images? This ties into your reference images. So it's just what do you like? What stands out to you? Is there anything that you might need to bring or buy in order to accommodate this shoot? Next question, what would be the total length of hair and makeup for this shoot? This is very important for a freelance model um, or any model period because you want to know how many hours that you're working. Because if there's money involved, 
you need to be compensated from the moment you walk in that door to the moment you leave set. Like, that's it. Unless you discuss otherwise, they need to be paying for that entire time. That needs to be discussed. And that needs to be, like, as concrete as possible. Even if a makeup artist doesn't show or is late, you still need to be compensated fairly for your shoot and for your time. So, this question is one that is interesting because photographers don't always have a crew some do and some don't so that really just depends on your photographer or your client that you're working with one question i would tell them model to ask is if it's okay to bring people i've said this in a previous video don't just pop up with your mom your best friend your cousin your brother whoever don't just pop up with them now of course Having them drop you off, staying high at the door, and then leaving, that's something different. But if you want people to come and hang out, there's just an etiquette that needs to be followed. You want to make sure that you're actually polite enough to ask that photographer if they can join in and, and observe your project. What that means is you have to keep your company in check. They should kind of like not even be there. Honestly, like all the input and the extra stuff people do is... A big reason why photographers don't ever want people at the shoot. Before the shoot even begins, you definitely want to figure out how you're going to be compensated. Now TFs, which stands for trade for print, I mean TFP is trade for print, um, or TF trade for time. You definitely want to figure out how you'll be compensated. Now in most cases, if you're paid, you normally will get whatever retouched image is there plus your funds. Now, if the image is any kind of trade for print, trade for time, you want to figure out how many images you get and how many of those will be retouched. The coolest photographers in my book are the ones who give you all of your shots but do offer to still edit maybe 5 to 10 images. And even that's a lot because retouching takes hours. So that's even generous. Two or three is still a really good offer. If you're working for a publication, you want to figure out if you're going to get tear sheets at the end of the shoot or once the publication hits the print. So what this is, is basically a photo from the magazine, like a tear, a torn sheet from the magazine um, that you can put in your portfolio book just to show your diversity or, you know, just add more to your portfolio. So I'll get into that in another video. Lastly, you may want to ask, what is the soft deadline? versus the hard deadline the reason for this question would be if you let's say you're working you guys are working together on a brand collaboration or you're working towards um like a magazine publication brands and magazines have deadlines they have to meet they have certain criteria that you have to meet on top of the deadline so all of your ducks have to be in a row you cannot afford to play around with dates and play around with people's time you have to literally have things done by a certain day and time or everyone loses, whether it be time, money, opportunities, whatever. That's the difference between a hard and a soft deadline. Soft deadlines don't hurt anything. It's just like it didn't get done. Hard deadlines are a little more detrimental. So you want to figure out which one you're working with and when it is. And make sure you get concrete dates. So those are my personal top 10 questions that you should ask. Sorry if I kind of hit it. Sorry in advance for the jump cuts. Um, just trying to get this video done because it was a little stressful in the beginning or whatever. Thank you so much for watching this video if you happen to stay till the end. Um, I will get better at these over time, but right now my main goal is just to be a little more consistent with kicking these out. So I really appreciate your support and have a great day. Bye guys.